Wisdom and Foolishness, Part 2. This is from Ecclesiastes, Chapter 10, Verses 11 through 20. As in the first part of Chapter 10, Solomon strings together phrases and examples of wisdom and foolishness. And like Part 1 of this message, it is up to the believer to determine how we need to live our life. We live it not as fools, but as believers who want to have wisdom, seek out wisdom, and live out our lives using the wisdom that God has given us. We have seen snake charmers use their flute to charm a serpent. If the charmer does not use his flute correctly, that serpent will bite him. Like the serpent that is not charmed, the fool will, con will continue to be a fool if he continues a life of foolishness and ignorance. His very speech will also swallow up the fool. What he says has no sense. It has no meaning. The contrast to this would be the wise man whose words will bring grace and has a sense of meaning to them. The fool begins a speech in foolishness, and the end of his words are but madness. Somehow he has a lot to say, but does not say very much. Another aspect of the foolish, you cannot tell them anything at all. They are so tied up in their ignorance and foolishness, what they know, what they believe, which is really nothing at all. They will not listen to wisdom. They will reject wisdom. We as believers show wisdom in our words and what we do, our very actions. Foolish words of the fool and their actions bring nothing at all. Much like their words, the very actions of a fool tires them out. Their ignorance is most telling in the most ordinary matters, which extends to spiritual matters as well. If a fool cannot find a town, find the city, find a place to go, how in the world would he find God? Solomon next describes the laziness and selfishness of leaders and rulers. The history of the kingdom of Israel is a turbulent one. When the Israelites had mature, God-fearing kings, their nation usually prospered. However, when they had immature and selfish rulers, the nation fell. First and second kings vividly describe the fall of the kingdom when leaders only thought of themselves. Money is king in our world. Wealth is power. With it, you can do just about anything. Leaders, businesses, families, even churches falsely believe that money is the answer to all our problems. 
Our problems are easily fixed and answered if you just throw money at them. Much like the quick enjoyment wine gives us, it is only temporary. So too is the last thing we just bought. We want to buy more and more and more. The Bible tells us that we need money to live in this world. It is a necessity. It also tells us the consequences of loving money. Wealth is dangerous because it deceives us to believe that money is the easiest way to get everything we want. The love of money, the lust for it, is sin because we trust money rather than we trust God to provide for us. The love of money will only bring pain. It will bring sorrow. And it will take you even farther away from God. Solomon ends off this chapter, chapter 10, with an interesting proverb. He tells us to not curse a king and the rich man. The last few verses he spoke of, of immature and selfish kings and money. How appropriate then for Solomon to end it off this way. Looking at the remaining verses, who would not be upset and angry at a leader or ruler who only thought about himself? That is the nature of man. Likewise, many of us are envious of the rich because they are rich. We might think this way because we live our lives paycheck to paycheck and some barely getting by in life. The truth is that we should not be worried or concerned about who or what our leaders are doing. Remember, all things are in God's hands and he controls all things. The same goes for those who have wealth. Does it really matter who has money and who does not? What truly matters is what we do in life with the benefits that God has given you. He may give you wealth. He may give you fame and fortune, or he may not. All we need to be concerned with is that we grow and mature as believers. Nothing else should matter. Wisdom and foolishness, two contrasting themes, which will you choose? The answer is easy and simple for the believer in Jesus Christ. That is to choose wisdom. Seek out wisdom. Ask God to give you wisdom in your life. This is how the believer in Christ needs to live a just and righteous life in a fallen and wicked world. Solomon showed us again the contrast between wisdom and foolishness. The world as a whole is foolishness, filled with fools, filled with those who are ignorant of who God is. But there also are those who are believers in Jesus Christ. Those who want to seek out his wisdom, know his wisdom in his word, and be filled with wisdom given to them by the Holy Spirit. 
Those who are fools do not have to remain as fools, though. They can be wise, but only if they seek out wisdom. The wisdom that God gives to human beings. And so we pray, Father, that you will open the heart of the fool now. Open that life, open that door that is closed so that they can receive your grace, receive your wisdom, receive your forgiveness from sin. And as they are opened, that Lord Father, you will open that life even more to change them from within, to convict them, to turn them away from a life of doubt and of foolishness. And bring them into a life that is founded on your grace, on your mercy, on your wisdom. We know, Lord, again, that many around the world live a life of foolishness, want to live a life of ignorance, want to live a life of rebellion. But your grace is sufficient. Your mercy is freely given to all, but all but we all need to turn from that life of rebellion, of foolishness, of rejection, and turn to you, Father. And so we ask, Lord, again, you continually open the heart of the lost sinner. That you will continually open the life of the person that again turns away from you or wants to turn away from you. And bring them to you, Father. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.